I'm going to be talking about how to assess veins for IV access. Um, first thing I'm going to talk about is the position that we'll be placing the patient in. Ideally, we want to have the patient in a seated position or a semi-fowler position. These positions allow gravity to help us in assessing and palpating the veins that we're going to be accessing. It puts gravity into the picture and then makes the veins that we are trying to access um, become more distended so they're more easy to find. Um, so ideally we want to be finding areas of the arm, um, veins of the arm on the dorsal and ventral sides, but there are areas that we do want to avoid um, and those are um, the ventral wrist, so on this side right here, and we also want to stay away from the veins along the thumb on that area. And then we also want to avoid the dorsal veins of the um, of the hand, especially in the older adults, because they're a lot more fragile. And so some other areas we want to avoid is if patients maybe had prior CVAs, they might have some extremity, one side extremity weakness. We want to use the opposite extremity in those situations. If they've had a mastectomy on one side, we also want to avoid that side and work on the other side if possible. Um, we also want to inspect the arm for any areas of redness, um, pain, um, areas of infection. We want to avoid those areas and ideally we'll be working on the opposite extremity if possible. We also want to keep in mind um, if patients have had previous menopunctures sites on one extremity, we don't want to work distally from that. So again, it would be ideal to do the opposite extremity, but sometimes we do have to do it on the same arm and just doing something more proximal to that would be um, the safest option for that. Um, let's see, what else am I forgetting? So another thing to keep in mind when we're doing, doing IVs is that we can always ask the patient their preference. So ideally we want to be working on the non-dominant arm if that's a possibility, but again, it doesn't have to be. Um, and then if they have a preferred site that they just kind of generally go to, we are more than, we should, we'd be more than happy to um, accommodate that if the vein is easy to access. And so um, one thing, so a couple things we can do, like I mentioned, um, to kind of make those veins more easy to assess and find would be to put the extremity in a dependent position. And so again, that's just keeping our arm or extremity lower than the level of our heart. So that's kind of why, again, why we are in a seated position. And we also can apply a warm compress to the area, um, which will also kind of increase circulation and just make those veins extend a little bit better and easy to see. So another thing, we, we didn't have a tourniquet, but we're going to apply a tourniquet about four to six inches above the area of access. And so again, just generally is right here. We want to assess our radial pulse. We're right here. Um, before and after the tourniquet is placed and we want to make sure that we do keep that circulation. The most important part is that we continue to feel that radial pulse after the tourniquet is in place um, to make sure that circulation is still getting to our um, distal extremity. Um, so yeah, so once we have the tourniquet in place, we'll be able to evaluate or assess the veins. And again, the median nerve, and that's another thing I didn't mention is that we want to kind of avoid placing IV access um, kind of in this cubital fossa just because the patient is going to be moving their arm, probably just moving around throughout the day if it's going if the IV is going to be staying in. Um, so we just want to avoid the extra irritation to the area. So we want to make sure it's below or above the elbow joint. Um, but again, if it's just for a blood draw, this is also a great place to access that. So again, the median nerve is usually in the cephalic and then basilic and then anywhere down here but yeah so we're just going to be kind of palpating the veins along the arm we're going to be looking for soft veins they should be bouncy so they shouldn't be squirming around <laughs> um, we want them to be kind of straight lines it would be easy to access um, and then once we do find that vein that we want to target as our IV or venipuncture, venipuncture site we want to release the tourniquet as soon as possible after that has been identified. Again, checking the radial pulse. Um, and then, yeah, so after that vein is identified, we are able to start the...